coming up on this week's show. I meet the new robot helping to keep beaches clean here in Thailand. I'm cleaning the beach. We travel to the most crowded island in the world. You asked for a seven-story bronze statue of yourself. Addy tries his hand at comedy improv in New York. It's beautiful, though. <laughs> and we go behind the scenes at a lab that looks after priceless old masters in Florence. Starting this week in Thailand, a country with over 2,000 kilometers of coastline, and every year millions of tourists come here to enjoy its tropical sandy beaches. But some of those tourists are having an impact on the marine environment. They're the ones who leave their rubbish behind when they finish their day at the beach. And it seems that smokers are among some of the worst offenders. So much so that Thai authorities have now introduced a smoking ban at some of the country's most popular beaches. It's now illegal to smoke at 24 beaches across the country. And if you are caught smoking or dropping cigarette butts, you risk a fine of up to 100,000 Thai baht. That's over 2,000 pounds and a year in prison. I've come to Songkla in the south of Thailand to find out just how big the problem of cigarette butts is. Yuma was part of a government team that sampled different beaches around Thailand to count the number of cigarettes. So a one meter square? Yeah. Chalatat Beach here in Songkla was found to have more than anywhere else in the country. Wow. Wow. These cigarettes? Wow. One, two, One, three, four, <laughs> five, six. six. Wow. That's a lot. Is that normal? Normal. Almost all cigarette butts contain plastic and take years to decompose. มันมีผลกระทบต่อสิ่งแวดล้อมเช่นก้นบุหรี่เนี่ยเวลาลงไปสู่ทะเลแล้วสัตว์ทะเลหายากที่จำพวกเต่าปลากินเข้าไปค่
How does it actually work? The robot is digging in the sand about five centimeters, shaking to separate the sand out and move the trash back to the truck. And how much rubbish do you actually collect? Before this, if we run about 80 meters, we get about four kilograms of trash. Four kilograms in yeah. 80 meters? Okay. okay, I'm dying to have a go to control it. Sure, just easy control. Okay, so that's forward and backwards, okay. Yeah, forward. And turn left and right. Oh, wow, okay. And this is control the speed of the shaker. Oh. And, and if you push this down, it will dig in the sand. Wow, this is great. Yeah, I'm cleaning the beach. Dr A and his team are working on a second prototype that will separate the shells out from the trash. At the moment, that has to be done by hand. It's so satisfying to see so much rubbish coming in. So many children come and interested, and after I take the robot into the truck, they start to pick up the trash by themselves. That's a good result. Yes, yes. There's a big focus here on getting the next generation to think differently about how they treat the country's beaches to protect this beautiful landscape for the future. Well, time now to leave the wide open beaches of Thailand behind and head somewhere a little more crowded. We're off to the island of Santa Cruz de Lotte, just off the coast of Colombia, where space really is at a premium. Mi nombre es Juvenal Julio, soy historiador de aquel archipiélago. Ahora mismo nos encontramos en Santa Cruz de Islote. Es la isla más poblada del mundo por metros cuadrados. De la pesca sí hay algunos que viven. Ya que la gente más bien todo lo que hace es pesca submarina, que es con arpón. El, el buceo que, con langosta, caracol, pulpo. Pero directa o indirectamente están vivi estamos viviendo todos el turismo. Cada quien cuida lo que tiene a su alrededor, porque somos pocos los que tenemos. Cada día revisamos los botecitos de los pescadores para ver qué producto trae. Era la comida favorita para ellos, pero ya el 80% la gente ha tomado de, de su conciencia. Still to come on this week's travel show. We head to Italy to find out what it takes to keep priceless old masters in tip-top shape. Many colleagues told me that you are totally crazy, it's impossible to do something. This week, I'm exploring Songkla in the south of Thailand. Jeez. 
It's nicknamed the city on two seas because it sits on both the Gulf of Thailand and an enormous lake. Although close to the Malaysian border, Songkhla has been largely unaffected by the unrest that's been seen in some of the areas in Thailand's deep south. And its location means its cuisine and architecture are a blend of Thai, Chinese and Islamic influences. And a lot of tourists coming here. A runs an art gallery in the city and has agreed to give me a tour. I'll show you the most unique ice cream shop of Songkhla. Okay, I'll let's give go. It a go. Mrs. Yu's father came here from China 85 years ago. On the way, he stopped in Singapore and learned the art of making ice cream. This is the vanilla ice cream. The vanilla ice cream. Yes. Some here say this was Thailand's first ice cream shop. Why egg yolk? Because egg yolk is creamy. And also sprinkle of chocolate. <laughs> It tastes much better with it. It looks good. Yeah. Here goes. Mm. It's really it? creamy, almost like a coconut flavor. Who would have thought it was so good? Now, if you're a fan of comedy, then there's a long list of improvised comedy festivals taking place all over the world this year, from Edinburgh to Singapore and Cape Town to Copenhagen. But what's it like to actually stand in the spotlight and try and make people laugh with no idea what's coming next? A while back, we sent Addy to a theatre in New York where tourists can do just that. Improvisation in its simplest form is the art of creating a scene or play with absolutely no pre-planning. We all are in unfamiliar territory. We I've come along to the pit in Manhattan to give it a go myself. The venue offers classes for first-time tourists as well as a place for more experienced comedians to hone their craft. I don't really... Leslie Collins, an improv veteran, led the class. I think I did see a ghost, not recently, but like a few years ago. To kick off, we did some warm-up exercises. Unboxers. Oh. Boxer briefs. Everyone was given a category and had to list seven things in quick succession. Seven types of hairstyles. The bob. One. One. Two. Two. Short hair. Three. Three. Long hair. Four. Four. Pigtails. Five. Five. Long tails. Six. Six. Long tails. Seven. OK, I'm really nervous. I'm about to get a category and I've got to name seven different types. What's going on whilst patting my legs and rubbing my stomach? They're coming, they're coming! <laughs> Trust me, with the pressure on, it's not as easy as it looks. Uh, seven creatures that make bad house pets. Okay. A grinsta! One. Uh, a gremlin with one toe. Two. Right, game's over. Time for the comedy to start. I let the pros go first. You ever been in an old-timey gang fight? <laughs> now, all you're given is a word or song, and where the skit goes from there is totally up to you. My fists are always right, bro. Good. You're gonna need to keep them there. I like your attitude. I like your game face. Well, this is um, it's this sort of like trying to okay. release, your you release your inhibitions in a place where people are so uninhibited. I'm running for president. Yeah, I know. A key part of improv is supporting your scene partner your and building on their yeah. ideas. Yeah. Something these guys have down to a T. You probably know that too, right? <laughs> I do. <laughs> you must be Joan. Joan, yes. Joan Collins, future president of the PTA. <clears throat> nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. I'm sorry the book career didn't work out. <laughs> These guys are really good. The it's just like, sorry about that. it's great to actually watch them at work. <laughs> <laughs> but this is just like, this is too much. And before long, it was my turn. With knots in my stomach, I took to the stage. You asked for a seven-story bronze statue of yourself. That's modest. <laughs> I mean, you had a school and a hospital level, so you could put this here. It's beautiful, though. It is beautiful. It's, Don't get me no, wrong. No, no, I'm, I'm coming round to it. I, I would think you would. I mean, well, it takes genius. a long time just to get around it. Uh... Good job. <laughs> All right, so the other guy definitely put in most of the work, but I gave it my best shot. So verdict time, how did I do? 
And he did great! I know he was so concerned before the class. He was very worried. <laughs> this is too much. What? This is too much. I think most people are scared at improvising because they don't really actually know what it is or how much fun it is. They are also very concerned about being funny and the pressure to be funny, um, but improv isn't really about that. It's, it's about being honest and having fun. Nobody gets me more pumped up than you do, son. If you're on a budget in New York, improv gigs are a great way to pack in some entertainment. A lot of places put on free nights, and if not, tickets are usually cheap. Or, if you're brave enough, why not try it out for yourself? We'll end this week in the historic city of Florence, birthplace of the Renaissance, and home to some of the most famous old masters in history, from Raphael to Giotto and Da Vinci. But all those fragile historic works don't look after themselves we sent Keith Wallace for a peek behind the scenes at one of the world's most important art restoration labs. Sometimes on warm summer afternoons, it feels like half of Europe has come to Florence. Here we are. Here's the view. And why not? The whole city centre is a giant open-air art gallery. This is what happens when you've got a really lovely bridge. It's full of people taking selfies. And here's one of its stars, the Ponte Vecchio, built in the 13th century. It's not exactly off the beaten track, though. Quick! <laughs> so this is the historic centre. It's all UNESCO World Heritage listed, firstly because it's incredibly beautiful, but secondly because the museums and galleries down there have some of the most important and famous works of art the world's ever seen, frankly. Uh, but you'll notice that there's a river cutting right the way through it. As you can imagine, it's very, very important to make sure that never bursts its banks. But tragically, in 1966, it did. 101 people died. And it's estimated around 14,000 artworks were damaged, many lost forever. The fantastic high flood mark is graphically shown by the wrecked jewellers and art shops on the Ponte Vecchio Bridge. Whoa! So this is the high water mark from the flood, which is, I'd say, uh, almost five metres. Uh, just over there, you can see the Santa Croce Basilica, which is stuffed with all kinds of artwork and relics. So you can see that might have caused quite a problem. It's taken half a century to restore some of the art inside, only two years ago, work finished on one of the most important pieces, Giorgio Vasari's depiction of The Last Supper. The damage was so profound that for 40 years nobody dared touch it. So in stepped the Opificio delle Pietre Giure, now one of the world's foremost restoration labs. In the beginning I was scared, very scared, because many colleagues told me that you are totally crazy, it's impossible to do something. But I, I trust in my people and uh, uh, with a, a long, long work, uh, we, we found the way. The Opificio still deals with the aftermath of disasters. It's currently looking after works damaged in Italy's recent run of deadly earthquakes. This is an interesting canvas painting coming from Emilia. Of course, it remained under the bricks of the church that collapsed. It was made in the, in the beginning of the 17th century. Each uh, uh, artwork can have a big meaning for the local community, because if it's the, the main altar of the church of that little town. So these were made by bricks and stone and, and it, I mean, it looks lucky that it didn't go right through the, through right the, through painting. the painting. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It must so, have happened to a lot of other paintings. Though. Yes, it's the, the, the mechanical damage is the most common during an earthquake. It's a painstaking business. As each artwork arrives, the damage is thoroughly assessed and the structure secured. So this is the back. This is what the back of a Renaissance artwork looks like. A lot of the restoration happens here first. The behaviour of the planks uh, was the, the 
first cause of damage because the variation of moisture or the environment. Then we had an electronic system to measure the micro movements of the planks. Considering you've got high tech in there, you've got someone putting glue on wood and poking yeah, it into there is painting. <laughs> high technology and uh, traditional uh, wood working uh, technology. Because the origin of the problems on the front comes from the back. I see. Oops. Don't fall into it. It's only after the back sorted out that the process of replacing each minuscule brushstroke can begin. Katerina here has been working on this 15th century altarpiece since 2012. È un dipinto bellissimo che è stato definito subito bello a meraviglia e solo che ha avuto un trattamento molto particolare, molto violento di pulitura. Questo è successo a fine 700, primo 800 e dove è stato trattato con un solvente caustico che ha proprio aggredito il colore e l'ha completamente mangiato. What surprises me is that you seem to be mixing the colors by hand. Is that hard? Eh, io so di che colori che compongono questo dipinto. Li conosco, so che questo è fatto con lacca e lapislazzulo, per cui recupero riprendo le stesse intonazioni cromatiche, prendo il lapislazzulo, prendo la lacca e compongo il colore e lo rifaccio. You have a big party when it's over. È una cosa strana perché i dipinti ti accompagnano per degli anni, cioè tu cresci con loro e diventano familiari, diventano una cosa molto anche intima e quindi vabbè, quando poi sono finiti è una festa ed è come un figlio che è cresciuto e va per il suo destino. The Opificio isn't normally open to tourists, but you can catch their work all around Florence. And of course, you can see their highest profile success, the Last Supper, hanging in the Santa Croce Basilica. Well, that's all we've got time for this week. Join us next week when... Addy heads to Cairo to discover the new music craze that's taking the city by storm. And I'm about to meet a band who have had a hit that has had 125 million YouTube views. And in the meantime, if you want to find out where we are in the world and share your travels, you can find us on social media. But until next time, from all of us here in Thailand, it's goodbye.